Good evening. I'm Father Tom Malionic. I'm the rector of St. Paul's Church in Kinderhook, New York. Today is Tuesday, April 7th. It is Tuesday in Holy Week. And we're about to pray the Office of Evening Prayer in the 1979 Book of Common Prayer of the Episcopal Church. If you have a copy of that uh, Book of Common Prayer and you'd like to follow along, we begin with an opening sentence and then we proceed to the section called Invitatory and Psalter, and that's on page 117. The psalm for this evening is Psalm 94. That's found in the Book of Common Prayer at page 722. There's also a link to uh, the St. Bede Productions Breviary, and uh, you can click that or copy that into your browser, and um, that will enable you to follow along with that text as well. It's pretty close to what we will be using here this evening. And if you don't want to do that, or if you don't have those resources, by all means, just listen and allow God to speak to you, uh, as always, through these words of scripture, through our prayers, and uh, pray along with us or allow us to pray with and for you. But this is a time of grace and blessing for, for all of us in the midst of a, a very stressful time. And it's good for us to be able to take some time out and to remember that, um, that we are not alone and that it is not entirely up to us to, to solve these problems that the world is experiencing right now. So it's a good time to pray to the one who can. And I would invite you to do what I'm about to do because I was just warned of that and that is to turn the cell phone and the other distractions and interruptions down. Um, to give ourselves a, mo a moment to let our minds and hearts come to rest so that we can be truly attentive to what God has to speak into our hearts this evening. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. On page 118, the Philosophilaron. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Psalm 94, on page 722. O Lord God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, show yourself. Rise up, O judge of the world. Give the arrogant their just deserts. How long shall the wicked, O Lord, how long shall the wicked triumph? They bluster in their insolence. All evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your chosen nation. They murder the widow and the stranger and put the orphans to death. Yet they say the Lord does not see, the God of Jacob takes no notice. Consider well, you dullards among the people, when will you fools understand? He that planted the ear, does he not hear? He that formed the eye, does he not see? He who admonishes the nations, will he not punish? He who teaches all the world, has he no knowledge? The Lord knows our human thoughts, how like a puff of wind they are. Happy are they whom you instruct, O Lord, whom you teach out of your law, to give them rest in the evil days, until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not abandon his people, nor will he forsake his own. For judgment will again be just, and all the true of heart will follow it. Who rose up for me against the wicked? 
who took my part against the evildoers? If the Lord had not come to my help, I should soon have dwelt in the land of silence. As often as I said, my foot has slipped, your love, O Lord, upheld me. When many cares fill my mind, your consolations cheer my soul. Can a corrupt tribunal have any part with you, one which frames evil into law? They conspire against the life of the just and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold and my rock and my God the rock of my trust. He will turn their wickedness back upon them and to destroy them in their own malice. The Lord our God will destroy them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter, the 27th through the 33rd verses. They came again to Jerusalem, and he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders as he, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him, and they said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? Answer me. And they discussed it with one another, saying, if we say from heaven, he will say, why then did you not believe him? But shall we say from man? They were afraid of the people, for they all held that John really was a prophet. So they answered to Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Here ends the reading. On page 119, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. On page 120, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to, to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The suffrages form A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the earth, all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. <coughs> O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And in the middle of page 124, the prayer for mission. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you. Let all nations obey you. All tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now is a time for us when we can bring before the Lord whatever concerns happen to be on our hearts, on our spirits, on our minds, on our souls. It's a time for us to, to be able to come honestly and and trustingly to the Lord and allow God to see the things that are most important to us. It's a time when we can ask for the things that we need for ourselves, for the people we love, the people we know, for the people who have asked for our prayers. It's a time for us to ask for the world, for situations, places perhaps that are, are deeply on our hearts and minds. It's a chance to bring all of that before God who is willing to listen and eager to hear and who is powerful and, and worthy. Lord, today our parish brings before you with love, Lynn, Rose, Teresa, Oakley, Michelle, Stark, Brian, Dave, Brendan, Glenn, Tom, John, Pam, Paul, the residents and staff of the Pine Haven Nursing Home in Philmont, and Jay. And we bring before you as well all who have asked for our prayers, all who have been commended to our prayers. Lord, we pray to you for blessing upon all those who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries or other milestones today. We remember all who have died in the communion of your church, O Lord, and those whose faith is known to you alone, especially in Yubisha Markovich. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light per perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through your mercy 
Rest in peace. Amen. Lord, we ask your mercy, your healing, and your protection for all of those who have whose lives have been touched by coronavirus disease, those who have become sick, those who care for them, those who love them, those who have died, and the families who grieve and mourn them. We also, Lord, ask your protection, especially on those who are involved in support activities, people who transport the goods and services that we need that hospitals need for hospital administrators and cleaning crews and maintenance people, technicians, therapists. We ask you, Lord, to keep them all safe. Thank you, Lord, for their willingness to be exposed on our behalf and for our, our well being. We pray for those who are finding just the sheer isolation to be difficult, parents, children. We ask you for those who are in nursing homes, those who are in hospitals and other facilities and institutions who cannot leave, travelers stranded in foreign countries, or even in other states, people unable to visit loved ones. Lord Jesus Christ, you not only tasted death and pain on our behalf, but also the pain of isolation and loneliness, betrayal and abandonment and dereliction. By the grace of your Holy Spirit, let us in our solitude not become bitter, nor let us in our loneliness become depressed. Keep hope alive in our hearts, O Lord and shield us also from the temptations that will beset us, temptations to anger or to envy or to gluttony or lust or greed or arrogance or sloth. Grant us clear vision of ourselves as members of your body and you as our head. Give us, Lord, the grace of creativity so that we can devise and make use of opportunities to, to deepen our relationships and expand our horizons, even at a distance. We ask you to make the communion of your saints a reality, a living reality for all people, so that we may know ourselves to be connected not only with the people we know, but with the whole church, and not only the whole church in, in our own day, but the whole church stretching backward to the beginning and the whole church going forward for generations, that we may know that we stand in that company of faithful witnesses. Remind us, Lord, that you are keeping your promise not to abandon us, but to be with us until the end of time. We pray for our own country and for all the nations of the world we pray for goodwill among them and for the well-being and the health of their people. We pray not only for physical health, Lord, but for mental health. And we pray for for good society. We pray for social order, for a dedication to the common good and a recognition of our solidarity and our dependence upon each other. Grant us, Lord, the, the virtues of, of civility as we deal with one another, especially, Lord, in, in social media, but also, Lord, as we deal with our institutions, with governments. Lord, let us not give cause to be divided or to turn ourselves from one another or, or to turn others from you. But instead, let us, especially, Lord, those of us who follow you, let us be examples of unfeigned love, 
kindness and gentleness and mercy and patience, understanding and encouragement. Lord, we pray for the churches of our area, especially for Hindu Hook Reformed Church and their pastor, the Reverend Rudy Disser and his family. In our diocese, Lord, we pray for our Bishop Bill, for our retired Bishop Ann. We pray in thanksgiving for all who have given so generously to support the mission of the church. And we pray, Lord, for those who are celebrating milestones today, especially the Reverend Susan Baker Borgeson, Justine Bernsey, Peggy Theodore, and Landon Moore. In the Worldwide Anglican Communion, we are praying for the Diocese of Mexico and their Bishop, the Right Reverend Carlos Tuche Porter, the Diocese of West Tennessee and their Bishop, the Right Reverend John Johnson, and the Diocese of Ideato, Nigeria, and their Bishop, the Most Reverend Caleb Maduoma. And I ask your prayers for me, a sinner. I have made it kind of our customary here to, to end with the prayer, the Mishota House prayer, um, which I've adapted slightly for, for use in the parish in place of the general thanksgiving. Bless the Lord this house, set apart to the glory of your great name and to the benefit of your holy church, and grant that your name may be worshipped here in truth and purity to all generations. Give grace and wisdom to all in authority that they may exercise holy discipline and be themselves patterns of holiness, simplicity, and self-denial. Bless all who are disciples here. Take from them all pride, vanity, and self-conceit and give them true humility and self-abasement. Enlighten their minds, subdue their wills, purify their hearts, and so penetrate them with your spirit and fill them with your love, that they may go forth animated with earnest zeal for your glory. And may your ever-living word so dwell within their hearts that they may speak with that resistless energy of love which shall melt the hearts of sinners to the love of you. Open, O Lord, the hearts and hands of your people, that they may be ready to give and glad to distribute to our necessities. Bless the founders and benefactors of this house and recompense them with the riches of your everlasting kingdom. For Jesus' sake, amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the divine help remain with us and with our absent brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us this evening in prayer. Uh, this being Holy Week and there being so much to do, I can't guarantee that I will be uh, at a specific place at a specific time. I, I'm planning to do morning prayer and evening prayer as we have been nine o'clock in the morning and five in the afternoon, but uh, um, managing 12.02 for noonday prayer and eight o'clock in the evening uh, just seems to be unwise at this point. I have other things and things to accomplish and people to be in touch with. So uh, I need that time to prepare for, for our celebration of the Easter Triduum, the, the three-day observance of Christ's passion and death and resurrection. It's a single, it's a single observance. It happens to stretch for more than a calendar day, but it's it's one single observance. Uh, and and especially we have this year the privilege, even though we can't celebrate it in person and even though we we kind of have to trim back and pare back on some of the um, the wonderful uh, traditions and customs and ceremonies that nevertheless, this is a time in particular this year when we can enter into that mystery more deeply and more fully, where we perhaps have the leisure um, and the, the space and the time in which to do that. So I invite you to join us for that. The schedule is now posted on our website. If you go to www.spec1851.weebly.com, um, spec, S-P-E-C-K, 1851, 
www.weebly.com uh, and go to the Holy Week page and there will be a whole schedule of the things that we hope to put up on Facebook and YouTube. And there are links to that as well in the text header to this, to this posting. So tomorrow morning, uh, we'll gather again in cyberspace here at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, and until that time, I, I pray that the, Lord, that the Lord will watch over you and guide you and grant you a peaceful night and rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.